from throwing racist remarks at her co-workers out of spite to people thinking she was just misunderstood, these are Rachel Nichols' most controversial moments. It all started during the 2020 NBA bubble, a resort where all the players, staff, and crew would be isolated during the pandemic. On July 4th, a report by the New York Times brought attention to leaked audio recordings involving Nichols in her hotel room at the bubble. A video camera captured a conversation between her and LeBron James' advisor, Adam Mendelson. The recording was stored on an ESPN server in Bristol and caught Rachel talking about her getting replaced by Maria Taylor to cover the 2020 NBA Finals coverage. Nichols wished Taylor all the success in the world, but was still bitter about getting the boot. Since Maria is an African-American woman, Nichols made it sound like this was ESPN's stunt to improve their diversity, which was already crappy for a long time, according to her. After hearing the recording, the employees in the company were not happy. ESPN tried doing some damage control and suspended one of their digital video producers, Kayla Johnson, who sent the video to Human Resources and Maria Taylor herself. And yes, Johnson was, in fact, a black woman. She received a two-week suspension without pay and was assigned fewer tasks at work. This didn't help the company's case at any point, because what Rachel said had everyone looking at their bosses differently, especially after they fired the snitch and let the air quote, racist, continue working. Johnson quit ESPN, and this was only the beginning of more controversies surrounding one of the company's best sports reporters. Members of NBA Countdown boycotted ESPN because of what happened and avoided making any appearances on the program. After Kayla was suspended, it was obvious to them that the studios sided with the alleged racist. Things got heated at the studios when commentators like Jalen Rose, Adrian Wojnarowski, and Jay Williams demanded ESPN president Jimmy Patero's intervention in the situation. Back then, ESPN failed to deal with the scandal for months, and the staff's reaction put them in a strict deadline. The problem was that because they weren't doing anything about Rachel's position as a reporter, all eyes were on Maria, whose contract was set to expire after the finals and ESPN didn't announce a renewal or anything. Kind of ironic because in the leaked video, Nichols made it clear to Mendelssohn that her contract was her contract. There would be no tampering with what's set in paper, even though she was already replaced as host of the finals. But wait, here's the part that I didn't talk about yet from the recording. During their discussion about the channel's hosts and Rachel getting replaced, Mendelssohn made a rather offensive remark of what was going on in the world. In case you don't remember, back when the world was in lockdown, the Black Lives Matter protests ran all across America. Mendelssohn sighed and said, I don't know, I'm exhausted. Between Me Too and Black Lives Matter, I got nothing left. This was followed by very loud laughter by Nichols. So racism and sexism, huh? Not the best look at the so-called misunderstood commentator. Mendelssohn also suggested that pitting two women over the same job was part of ESPN's plan to cut off some female employees. You see the layers to all of this? But Rachel didn't just get political, she also talked about ESPN itself, which made matters worse. When she emphasized that it was unfair for her to get replaced, she called most of the people at ESPN headquarters white conservative male Trump voters. These were the same men who were the reason she had a tough time working at the company. So after overworking herself more than them and getting replaced by Maria, she just wanted to blow off some steam, thinking she was alone. I guess she wasn't. Rachel was frustrated and defended herself by saying she was unloading to a friend about ESPN's process, not about Maria. She even tried reaching out to Taylor and apologized to her via text, but she never got a reply. This didn't mean that Nichols would get angrier than she already was about the situation, because she revealed that she respects her decision. Rachel commented about how her safety was compromised after it was obvious that she was getting spied on in her hotel room. A commentator calling out a major sports channel for spying on their female co-workers takes a lot of guts, so people weren't sure what to make of the situation. Should they be mad at her racist remarks or empathize with her for getting spied on by her employers? Well, a spokesman for ESPN announced that they're happy with how they dealt with the situation and are proud of the coverage they continue to produce. Their focus would remain on both Maria and Rachel simultaneously, but there was nothing about the hidden software that helped with the spying. See, the problem here was that because of all this, Nichols was just making Taylor's job more difficult than it already was. I mean, it was 2020. 
How can stuff like this be an issue? After everyone found out that Rachel and Mendelssohn were besties and gossiping in her hotel room, Taylor found it discomforting to work with him because she still needed to score interviews with basketball newsmakers. But she still pulled through with her job. The company, on the other hand, was at risk of facing a lawsuit. Rachel spoke to a good lawyer and didn't move forward with anything legal. Taylor's race was starting to get in the way of her work, as if it were the 60s again. After a widely praised on-air commentary addressing the tragic murder of George Floyd, she faced criticism from her own co-workers for discussing these topics in the first place. What was more frustrating was the fact that there was a lack of serious attention given to her concerns. Taylor sent an email to ESPN executives, including the president, telling everyone that she will not call herself a victim, but has felt victimized and doesn't feel as though her complaints have been taken seriously. The only time she heard from HR after two incidents of racial insensitivity was to ask if she leaked Rachel's tape to the media. Her condition to continue working on the show was that Rachel would not make any more appearances on NBA Countdown. Now, even though ESPN executives agreed with Maria's terms, Nichols still showed up on set but didn't really interact with Maria for obvious reasons. Today, Rachel works with Showtime Basketball as a producer and host. A lot of drama took place in the following months, with employees unhappy with how ESPN treated Nichols with no consequences. A simple conversation in a hotel room tested the limits of a massive sports channel. According to reports, she was making between $1.5 and $2 million dollars a year. That's a lot of money you're getting from a company you absolutely hate. But here's where it gets even crazier. Sources say that Rachel's career and earnings were because of her relationship with Jimmy Butler. Now, there has been a lot of speculation between the two ever since Jimmy invited her to his home for an exclusive interview in 2018, after his infamous practice with the Minnesota Timberwolves. During this interview, he complimented Rachel for being a good journalist and a good, wait for it, friend. Another huge thing that happened was the bubble itself. There was a noise complaint from Jimmy's hotel room. There was loud bumping going on, as if he was bouncing a ball non-stop. Now, I'm not going to get into too much detail, but Rachel's name was in this situation too, and I think you can do the math from here. Being in a heated relationship with an NBA star is one thing, but doing this while you're under fire for racist remarks, it sounds a little tone deaf, don't you think? But despite all the controversy, people have all been thinking the same thing. After her contract with ESPN expired, did Rachel deserve everything that she was put through? In her defense, she was having a harmless conversation with her friend in her private hotel room. She didn't know she was being recorded without her consent. Besides, this is a serious criminal offense, and even though she spoke with a lawyer, I'm surprised she didn't sue the company. Instead of bringing light to a weird software that listens to their employees' conversations and records them from their laptops without knowledge, everyone focused on her frustration. Sure, she could have worded the situation better and talked about Taylor like a co-worker instead of an enemy, but she was just letting out a bit of frustration. Again, she worked super hard to get to where she was because of the right-winger men that voted for Trump in the company. ESPN's reaction and the way they kept demoting Rachel, putting her on the sidelines on her own show, was their way of controlling the situation. But truth be told, if you remember what I said about Maria's treatment as a commentator on set, no woman was really winning in the end. Both Nichols and Taylor were facing mistreatment at work, and it was only a matter of time until one of them exited the company. Well, to no one's surprise, both Maria and Rachel left the network, and some say that it was entirely ESPN's fault, but I'll let you be the judge of that. And so, from people thinking she was just misunderstood to throwing racist remarks at her co-workers out of spite, those were Rachel Nichols' most controversial moments.